everyone. Welcome to part three of my my site-to-site -site MPLS VPN failover demo. My name is Devin Adams. I'm with Dynamic Worldwide uh, Training Consultants over here in Tempe, Arizona. I am a Fortinet instructor. And in the last video, I'm just going to jump right to it. All right. In my last video, we uh, set up a health check between site one and site two of our point-to-point -point connection, right? And this could be like a fiber link or MPLS or some kind of like, you know, uh, Metro Ethernet, right? And the whole goal here is to get our traffic to always use this MPLS while it's up and then take a redundant VPN connection as needed in case this goes down. So um, in order to get it to recognize a down properly, we did a, a link health check. So that's up and that's running. Um, so in this lab, and we'll check that before we go forward, but in this lab, we're going to create the, the VPN tunnels. Now, I did not mean to have three circuits here, <laughs> okay? Uh, um, but it was requested and I thought that was neat. You know what? I'm going to roll with it. So I already have a... Um, video recorded of a mesh site-to-site uh, -site topology, right? Um, so I'm not going to actually dive deep into the details here because it's already been done, but it's going to be the same principle. And unfortunately, because we now have three portals here going to a single branch office, we're going to have to create three separate VPN tunnels, all right? And then three separate ones back and then uh, adjust the, the routing and everything like that to make sure that they are prioritized. So um, challenge accepted. I was thinking about taking these out, but I'm like, you know what? I will leave them in. So enough yapping. Let's start doing. So let's go ahead and get to our FortiGate. This is where we left off in the last video, right? Uh, our health checks are up. Everything looks good. Now, one thing that I meant to uh, mention here, now, on our primary FortiGate, we had the, the WAN load balancing um, happening, so our, our checks and everything and latency and jitter and packet loss were visible there. And now you can actually see the statistics have kind of evened itself out, right? Um, so it doesn't look like we, we're having all these packet losses. But you don't see that if you just manually set up a single health check without the WAN link load balancing. They call it SD-WAN, by the way, in 5.6. To add those statistics, all you need to do is right-click on the columns, right? And you can go ahead and add those metrics there, all right? In fact, you know what? I probably want to see packet loss right after, right after status, right? And I'll do also latency and jitter. I think I lost my packet loss. I lost my packet loss. All right, there we go. Uh, just so it reads a little bit better. There we go. So this way I can come here real quickly and, and see what's going on there. But at least my MPLS connection is up and healthy. So um, let's go ahead and create the VPN tunnel. So first I'm going to start with this side right here with these three links. Now, even though the software defined WAN or the link load balancer abstracts our WAN connections, and it does a really good job with that too, along with our health checks now that we have latency, jitter, and all that jazz to do some policy-based routes based off of quality. Uh, when you make the VPN tunnels, they still have to go to a, a listening interface. So it's one of the few times where we ignore the abstraction, right? And we actually point to an actual port. So for the sake of time, I'm just going to use the wizard through all of these, which builds all of the proper um, policies and routes for me, simply because uh, in real life, if I had this many, I'd probably start zoning them together and grouping IP addresses for clutter reasons. But um, that's already done in another video. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to go, I'm just going to go with it. So the very first one that we're going to do is port one to our site two. All right. So, and also if you remember from lab, uh, if it is a 10.200, we're making believe that's a WAN connection, all right? That's really just a Linux box right there. And once again, there's a video on how to set one of those up too. So let's do it. So I'm gonna go to my VPN wizard. I'm gonna create a site to site. I'm gonna call this uh, MPLS VP, now that's way too long. I'm just gonna say um, VPN 
site two, uh, backup one. I wonder if it'll let me even make it that long. Ah, it did. Uh, now this is the gateway, right, to site two, which is going to be 10.200.3.1. Now normally these are public. Okay, now look at that. I wonder why it decided to use port two there. Huh, I wonder if it was like during its little algorithm or something for its load balancing. That was kind of interesting. I'm going to force this on port one, by the way. So, and here we go. Do a super secret long secure password. Uh, it's just password, by the way. But in real life, that'd be nice, long, and secure. And now our local interfaces, right, uh, are going to be, uh, believe it or not, yeah, it's still going to be this, right? Because that's our ultimate goal, is to connect site 1 and site 2 together, not the site to site connection of the 10.10. .10. So there we go. And then 192.168.2.0 slash 24. And uh, yeah. And that is it. Oh my gosh, how cool is that? So let's do another. And I will call this, uh, I already forgot what I called it, site uh, 2 VPN uh, backup 2 now. Uh, what a mess. All right, there we go. Maybe I'll have a different lesson on naming conventions. All right, so 10.200.3.1. Okay, once again, very interesting, but we'll keep it at port 2 now. And then the pre-share key. So there might actually be a better way to do this with the quick mode selectors. Um, I'm just using what I know right now, though. So here we go. 192.168.1.0. Um, oh, nope. Slash 2.0.24. All right. So that's the second tunnel. And we'll make another one. And here we go. Uh, v oh, sorry. Site 2 VPN. Backup three. What next? Ten dot two hundred dot three dot one, right? But this time we'll use our port four and the pre share key. Always double check that pre share key when you're first loading these bad boys up. All right, here we go. All right. So we now have three redundant VPN connections. And this is technically called, if you guys remember from class, a partial mesh because only one side, one side has all the redundant connections. And it's going to a branch office that only has a single ISP. So um, all right, very cool, very cool. So let's go ahead and do, um, let's go ahead and do site two now. And this is also going to have three, okay? Because it needs to have the the expectation, right? When it, we do a um, IPsec tunnel, of what is coming through, based off of the the source IP address. So this one's going to be 10.200.4. This one's going to be .2.1. This one's going to be 1.1. So. Once again, I'd probably zone it up and all that good stuff. But for right now, I'm just going to, um, yeah, I'm just going to fly through it because I've already done a video on this. So, all right, let's go ahead and create our first tunnel. Okay. And we're going to say from, actually, that's tacky. So I'll just say um, site one VPN. Back up, and I'm going to cheat here by just copying this so I don't have to type that over and over and over again. There we go. Number one, next. And then I'm going to do 10.200.1.1. So that's going to be my first internet service provider at my main site. Pre sure key has to match. Double check. Looks good to me. There we go. Hit next. And then for our quick mode selectors, there we go. Uh, 168.1.0/24. Uh, there we are. And let's add another one, but this time coming from 10. Oh, oops, that's my my tunnel name. All right. Now, 
2.1, and that's going to be my second ISP connection right over here, coming out of port 2. All right. Uh-oh. Come on, buddy. You can do it. You can do it. Here, let me hit F5 there. I think my, my sorting hat just, uh, get it, the wizard, the sorting hat, just died on me. So, um, why did that die? That was a little bit weird. Right? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, you know what? I might, until I adjust the weight on this thing, start having some symmetrical routing problems. Um, because that's what we're going to do in number four, and I bet you anything that's what's happening. So, uh, let me actually go ahead and do this locally. So I'm actually now on the site two administrative side, and then we should be able to access it just fine. So, um, all right. Whoa, look at all those failures. That was actually from, from earlier. So uh, let's go ahead and do our tunnel here. So, all right. See how it already came up? Yeah, we didn't want it to do that. We did not want it to do that. And that's why we need to adjust the routes. Because remember, our goal is to have it going down the MPLS network. But when it creates the routes by the wizard, it uses the same distance and the same priority, which we know from class instantly kicks in what? Equal path, um, equal cost multipathing. And that's not our goal. So here we go. Um, site one vpn backup and once again I'll, I'll i'll cheat here i'll hit copy all right two we'll hit next our gateway is 10.200 but i'm glad that i was able to show you guys asymmetrical uh, routing errors and that's when it goes out one interface but something else shoots it back the wrong way and the FortiGate's not expecting it in its session table and just <laughs> drops it. Anyways, here we go. Pre-share key, password, little squirrel moment there. All right. And then our local is LAN3, right? 192.168.1.0 with a slash 24. And let's add the last one which is going to be three. And that is 10.200.4.1. All right, pretty sure key. All right, let's hit next. Good stuff. All right, popping out of land three, 192, 0, 24. And that is it. Now we have the other ones, right, that are going to happen. Um, in fact, you know what? Before we end this video, I wonder what would happen if we just kicked them all on. So um, there we go, IPsec. And what's nice is that you don't even need to create a packet flow. You can just right click on the monitor and, and bring up that phase phase one and phase two tunnel, right? And even though it's gonna distribute the traffic according to the equal cost multipathing. So there you guys go. So we've now created three VPN tunnels because we have three circuits, okay? Um, bam, 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 right, and bam. And in our next video, we're gonna see how we can adjust the routing uh, metrics so they're not all <laughs> conflicting with each other. Uh, we don't want to cause the problem that you just saw when I lost access through my MPLS tunnel because it instantly kicked in another route and started distributing the traffic a different way. So that's no bueno. So that's where I'm going to end it here. Um, and uh, yeah, so when we come back, we'll go ahead and fix that and then test the failover. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys in just a few moments.